Happy New Year and uh, welcome to the 20s. This is Mori reporting from Berlin and this is actually a remake of my uh, very first video I did on using React hooks with D3. And I thought I will remake this video because it had really uh, bad audio quality, the font size was terrible and I thought I will explain things a little bit differently uh, this time around. So this video is about the basics of combining uh, D3 with uh, React and React hooks. And uh, what is D3? D3 is a library that you can use to create complex uh, data visualizations. And uh, it has introduced a new way to work with it called uh, the Joint API, which makes it uh, much more approachable and uh, easier to use. So I think it is a really good time to jump into D3 because React has also changed over the last couple of years by introducing uh, React hooks and uh, shifting their focus clearly towards uh, functional components and away from class components. And this is really important because in the past you had to rely on class components and uh, lifecycle methods to work with uh, D3 and React. And uh, now this is no longer your only option. And uh, yeah, this is what this whole video or this series is about. It's about combining D3 with uh, the new, new way of working with React. So uh, for this video and this series, I'm using something called Create React App. It's a very simple uh, tool to um, like create a React App quickly without worrying about the setup too much. And I did this already in my folder. I ran it and uh, then you get something like this. You have an app.js and app.css and so on. And uh, yeah, this is uh, what I use for this series. So this is what the app currently looks like. I just replaced everything the app renders per default with this uh, like video component, which I'm just using to uh, record myself in these videos. So one uh, little thing I want to note before getting started, uh, this video in particular is not going to be very visual. It is just going to be about the basics or the basic concepts of uh, combining React and D3. And it is going to be about something called the general update pattern in D3, which we're going to apply later. So now let's uh, get started. Um, imagine that in your app, you have this data array, for example, and it is just an array with some arbitrary numbers in it. And um, you want to visualize this data by rendering a circle or a dot in an SVG for every value in this uh, data array. And you could just do this very easily without even thinking about D3 by just going into your component and saying, I will just render an SVG and then I will iterate or map over this uh, data and render a circle for every value. And you would do that by saying data map and for every value, I want to return a circle out of it. And uh, each circle should have a radius equal to the current value, for example. And then you would see I have uh, this SVG here with five circles, each having a different uh, radius. And this is something you can totally do uh, with a React. You can let React handle uh, the rendering of the elements. So in this uh, particularly uh, silly example, uh, I let React handle and manipulate the DOM elements, as you can see here. And uh, the thing about D3 now is that it also comes with its own and optional way to uh, yeah, handle and manipulate the DOM just like React does. And this is basically where we are now at a crossroads. We have to decide if we want to let React handle the DOM or if we want to let D3 handle the DOM. Uh, what we can still do is we can just let React handle the DOM elements while just using the utilities and the mathematical functions D3 provides to uh, position these circles, for example. Um, or we can just let D3 do everything because uh, that also has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. It is a bit more verbose. It is not as declarative as React, but it does come with some advantages when it comes to rendering axes or when it comes to transitions or animation. And uh, this is exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to let D3 handle the DOM and not React. And uh, React is actually going to take a step back and just provide the um, SVG element we have here to D3 so that D3 can uh, manipulate the DOM and uh, apply some D3 magic to that uh, SVG. And um, yeah, and the reason why I am choosing the D3 DOM manipulation over the React one is not because I think the like uh, the D3 way is better than the React way. That is not the case. Um, I just think that 
it will be much easier for you to understand all of the examples and all of the tutorials on D3 out there uh, like with the D3 way because you will not find a lot of React and D3 examples. All of the D3 examples you will find out there will, will be done in pure uh, JavaScript and um, I think this will be much more helpful for you. So uh, to demonstrate how the D3 DOM manipulation works and how we would render this chart we have here with D3, uh, I have to just remove the circles I have right here. I will leave the SVG because, uh, like I said, we have to pass this SVG DOM element to D3 so that we can uh, like manipulate it. And to do that, we have to make use of hooks. So to make this SVG element available to D3, we have to make use of a hook called uh, useRef. Uh, I am imported it uh, up here and uh, it works like this. You go to your functional component and you say const SVG ref, for example, you can name it however you like, equals use ref. And this will create a reference uh, object for you. And um, then you have to pass this ref to the uh, SVG DOM element by saying ref equals SVG ref. And to demonstrate how this works, I'm just going to log out the SVG ref uh, variable right here. So uh, I am logging out the SVG ref variable as you can see here, and it, uh, it is an object with a current property, which is undefined, and it does not contain our uh, SVG DOM element. And um, it is undefined because um, React only updates this SVG ref uh, variable when the SVG DOM element has been rendered. And at this time, when I log out the variable, it is not rendered yet. So we basically have to wait one cycle uh, to access the um, SVG DOM element. The best time to access uh, the SVG DOM element from this variable is actually in another hook uh, called uh, use effect. So uh, use effect works like this. You import it first from up here, and then you say in your functional component, use effect. And here you pass in a callback function, which gets triggered for the very first time the uh, DOM elements in this component have been rendered. And uh, it also gets rendered every time the elements you pass in in this so-called dependency array change. And if you just let it uh, be an empty array like this, then it means that it will only be called once when uh, the uh, DOM elements have been rendered. And this is uh, what we uh, need for now. And here I will just log out the SVG ref again to see uh, what we have then. Now you see the uh, SVG ref variable is locked out twice and uh, the first time it's locked up here and the second time in this use effect hook after all of the DOM elements have been rendered. And uh, then it becomes this object with the current property which actually points towards our SVG DOM element. And this DOM element we now have to pass to D3 so that we can uh, work with it. So now I want to make this SVG DOM element available to D3. And to do that, I have to make sure that I have D3 installed, uh, of course. And I did that uh, by saying npm install D3. And uh, here I need to import something from D3 called select. And then I'm going to use this in my use effect hook and say const SVG equals select. And here I'm going to pass the SVG ref current property uh, where our SVG DOM element lives. And now I will have all of the uh, D3 methods uh, at my disposal to like manipulate the DOM or uh, render the circles, for example. So to render a circle for every value in this data array now, for example, I actually have to uh, think a little bit differently and it takes a little while to get used to. Uh, but uh, yeah, please bear with me here. So to render these circles with D3, you actually have to uh, go down here and say, hey D3, select all of the existing circle elements you find in my SVG and uh, synchronize them with the data I am giving you here. And here's where I pass the entire uh, data array with the five elements. And then uh, this is where D3 then kind of figures out, hey, you told me to find all of these circles in your SVG, like no circles, there are currently no circles, and you want me to synchronize these uh, circles with the data you gave me, this data array of five elements. So zero circles, five elements. This means you have to create five circles in your SVG. 
And uh, you can see this summary if I actually log out this uh, line right here. So I will just log it out and see how this selection uh, looks like. So uh, as you can see here now, this line returns something called a selection in D3 terms. And it gives you a lot of information, but the three most important things for now uh, are the enter, update, and exit selections. So the enter selection, represented by this enter property, represents all of the DOM elements or the nodes which need to enter your SVG to have this sync between data and the DOM. And then there's the update selection, which represents all of the um, circles or the DOM elements which need to be updated uh, to have this sync. And then there is the um, exit selection, which, which represents all of the circles which need to uh, be removed from your SVG. So if there were more circles in the uh, SVG than the elements in my data array, then uh, these circles would need to be removed. And uh, this summary is now what we need to use to actually create uh, the elements we want. Now that I have the summary of entering, updating, and exiting elements, uh, this is where the uh, join API or the general update pattern comes into play. I can now control what to do with entering, updating, and exiting elements in this new join API. And for that, you just say dot join and pass in a callback for each type of element for entering, updating, and exiting elements. You can now define what to do with each type. And I will now start with the entering elements for every new piece of data that needs to be like represented in my SVG. And for that, I will say enter, and I will say enter append circle. So this will actually create the circle DOM element in that SVG for me, for every new piece of data. And then I'm going to pass an update callback. And um, this will be called for every circle that is already there in my SVG. And I will say that every updating element gets a new attribute um, called class, or the class attribute is going to be set to be updated. And then I want to handle the exiting um, elements, so every circle which is no longer needed. And I want that every exiting circle gets removed. And this is why I call dot remove. So if I save that and look at the elements tab, you can now see that my SVG has five circles. So to test this update callback, watch what happens if I just add a circle to my SVG, which will just pre-exist. And if I save that, you will see that uh, D3 will actually reuse the circle DOM element it finds and just update it. And this is why you can uh, see the class updated on the circle because uh, yeah, the element just gets updated. And I can also just uh, test the exit callback by adding even more circles to my SVG. I will just add six circles now. And if I save that, you will see I have now five circles uh, with the class updated. This is because V3 will reuse the circles uh, which it needs to sync the data and the DOM, but it will remove one of them because I only have five uh, elements in my data array. So if I now wanted to uh, define the radius or the X and Y coordinates of these circles, I could just go to my enter callback, for example, for every entering element, uh, I now want that they get the attribute R, the radius attribute. And instead of just writing like a hard-coded value here, I could just pass in a callback function which receives the current value in my data array as an argument. And I can just return this value. I can also mess with it if I want it, but I'm not going to do that for the radius. I can also add more um, attributes like... Um, the uh, cx attribute, the x coordinate of a circle. But here I'm just going to double it. And the same for the um, y attribute or the y coordinate of uh, a circle. And I'm going to add another attribute to make them a bit more distinguishable by saying stroke uh, red. And then you will see I have five circles here. 
So uh, can you guess what happens if I re-add one of the like pre-existing circles here in my SVG? Um, then you will see that one of the circles doesn't have all of the attributes I have defined here because these attributes are only applied to entering circles so for every new circle. And to share this like behavior between entering and updating uh, circles, I could just copy all of these attributes and add them to the update callback. But this is actually not um, the right way. Here is where you can also see the like difference between React and D3. You can see that React doesn't really provide like fine control over entering and updating elements like D3 does. It uh, comes with the price, of course, it becomes more verbose. And uh, in order to like share this uh, behavior I have defined for both entering and updating elements, I don't want to repeat myself. And this is why uh, I can just cut out these attributes I have defined here and remove them from here, from the update callback, and just like add them after the join. And uh, this will then apply these attributes to both entering and updating elements because this join actually returns a selection of both entering and updating elements. So you don't have to repeat yourself. But wait, there's more to this join API. This exit callback, which I have defined here, this is actually a D3 default. D3 will automatically remove all of the circles which are no longer needed even uh, without this uh, callback because this is a default. So, uh, but if I actually wanted to like animate or transition these exiting elements before I remove them, I could use this callback. So, uh, and if I didn't need this like updated class, which I have just added for demonstration purposes, I could also just remove this update callback. I don't need to define it. And if my enter callback just looks like this, like uh, that it just renders a circle, appends a circle, I can just replace uh, this uh, function with just a string saying circle. So this will automatically create a circle element for me. And uh, now you can see it looks much more concise and does the same thing which it also did before. Like if I add six circles, I will have uh, five of them. So to demonstrate that this chart will even work if the underlying data changes, I have moved the entire uh, data array I had to a new hook called use state hook, where you can just um, store some data and change it later on if you want. And uh, for changing that data, I have created two buttons. One is called update and the other one is called filter data. Update data will increase each value in this data array by five and filter data will like filter this uh, data array for values equal or less than uh, 35. And uh, you can see that uh, when I hit update data or filter data. And uh, this is happening because um, now the data I have defined here in this use state hook is also added to the dependency array of use effect. This means every time this data changes, when I hit one of these buttons, this entire code block is getting triggered again. So if I press filter data, a D3 will first find five circles in my SVG. Then it will notice, okay, but I only have like three elements in my data array. So uh, three of them need to get updated and two of them need to be removed. And this is being handled every time the data changes. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned a thing or two about uh, yeah using React hooks with D3. Uh, just a quick recap, you just use uh, an SVG element here. You uh, give it a ref and um, access this ref in use effect and uh, yeah, apply some D3 magic in here. Just make sure that you um, call this use effect hook every time the data changes so that you have this like updatability. And uh, yeah, that's all that you need to know for now. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, see you in the next one.